Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video into the topic of pattern recognition and machine learning. In this video, we will be covering a short introduction, so just the basics of regularization. So let's just jump right in. In the last videos, we talked about how we develop our function with uh, which we want to approximate the data that we are given. We do this with a sum starting from j is 0 to m. M is our degree of our polynomial, and we just start out with w0, w1 times x to the power of 1 plus w2 times x to the power of 2, and so on, till we end with wm times x to the power of m. And in the last video, we talked about how choosing the wrong m, so a m that is too high, can lead us into having a graph that is oscillating a lot. And this is not what we want because this oscillation represents a, a fit to the random noise. And we don't want to learn the random noise. We just want to learn the underlying stru structure. So we want to ignore the noise. But if we choose M too high, we will uh, basically learn the noise. This was our error function. So we have a half and this is our polynomial that we developed in one. And this is our targets. So the target, uh, the corresponding target for every input x, i, and t, i. So for a given x, we expect a given t. And here we measure the difference between those two, square it. So the positive and negative don't cancel out, don't cancel out and just multiply it with one half. So we have it easier when we derive it later. And the third step, of course, is the derivation with respect to w. Set the derivatives to zero, get the local uh, the minima, hope that it's a global minima, and then we're basically done. So let's go through an example. We have, again, our 10 data points, and now we look at the actual values of the w's, so of our parameters that we can tune. When we have a degree zero so it's basically just a straight line we have for example in this case a 0 0.1 so it's fairly small it's approximately zero when we choose a degree one we're between zero and let's say one so this is our interval when we go higher for m equals six we we are already in the area of zero to 20. so this is just a specific uh, in our specific in instance where we select the value uh, the data of a sine wave with a little bit of noise and if we go to m equals 9 we're already in the ballpark of a million and this is not something that we want to see so let's just draw it again for m equals 0 our result will be something like this for m equals 1 we have something like this. For m equals 6, we already have a lot of oscillations, but not as bad as if we have a degree, a polynomial of degree 9. And now where the question is, how can we select a large m, so a large degree uh, of our polynomial, but discourage it from getting those large coefficients? And this is exactly where the topic of regular regularization comes into play. So we want to have a system where we can set the polynomial to the degree 9, but still have values around the 0 to 1 mark. We do that by just simply adding a term to the error function. So we develop a new error function. This was the part that we have with, that we had the last time. And now we add a lambda divided by 2 times the length of our vector with the w's. So a w to the power of 2 is basically this one. It's w transpose w. Here it's not a single value, but the whole vector. So we have this is our vector w. That goes on, of course. So we have w0 squared plus w1 squared plus w2 squared and so on till we have the last one is wm squared. 
And this method is also called shrinkage. It's called shrinkage because we shrink these values, these values, so that they do not become too large. And if we use this specific instance of w to the power of 2, so the length of the vector, it's called ridge regression. And in a neural network that does the, appro the approximation of this, uh, fun of this polynomial, we call it weight decay. So let's look at the values again if we add a little bit of regularization with the uh, lambda. So the lambda defines how complex the function will be and to what degree it will be overfitting. So if we have lambda equals zero, we have basically the same thing. So we have our degree nine, we have 10 points, and we have basically the same large values that we do not want. So if we set this to zero, this will basically just fall away and we didn't improve anything. If we said lambda to one, so we have a half times the length of the vector, we get values that are fairly close to zero. And now we have to look at where in this range between zero and one, do we set the value of lambda? Because we don't want everything to be zero, of course, but we also do not have do not want the values to be extremely large, like in the case of lambda zero. So let's have a look at a visual example. So here again we have our 10 data points and we choose a polynomial of degree 9. And we start with the training set. So if we said here we have the scale is on the ln of lambda, so we're here at 40, this is basically approximately zero. So if we set lambda to zero, we are here. And the uh, root mean square error is zero because in this case, the polynomial can go through, uh, is going through each and every data point. So we, we are in the area of overfitting here because the test is uh, zero, but our training data, the error on our training data is infinite. As soon as we start to increase lambda, we're increasing the train error as well. So now in this area, our polynomial does not go through each and every data point, but it's fairly close. And we see that we have a decline of our error in our test set. So we're getting better, better, and better. At a certain point, we start to increase the training error and increase the test error. Why is that? Because at a certain point, the function is not the error that we have, that this part, if lambda is getting too big, we only try to reduce this one. So this basically just falls away and we do not care about the distance anymore. And the only thing that we're trying to do is only minimize the values of the actual vector. So we just setting everything to zero. So at the end, we'll just have a straight line that goes through the origin. And it's just a basically a straight line through the origin where x is, uh, where y is zero all the way. So this is why our training error goes up and our test error goes up. So let's just summarize again. We want to have a option that we can set a large value for our degree. So we want to have m equals, for example, nine, but not fall into the regime of overfitting. And we see that we are in the regime of overfitting if we have large values in our parameters w. To solve this, we use regularization. And we're doing that by simply adding a term that is considering the values of our uh, parameters w that we're trying to choose. If we choose this specific addition to the term, it's called ridge regression. If we, uh, visual, if we look at the values of our parameters w, 
if we set it to zero, of course, nothing changes. We're still in the regime of overfitting. And if we set it to one, we're setting almost all parameters to zero. Visualized, it looks like this, that we at first have, we start out here with no regularization. We go up and at this area, our training error also decreases. And at a certain point, we don't care about getting the uh, polynomial through the data, but we only consider uh, minimizing the values of our, uh, the values W, and we start to increase our error function again, because this part starts to dominate in comparison to that one. So we get rid of that one if we set the lambda too high. And here we have to select the correct lambda to be in this area and find the local minimum. So we basically just shifted the problem on, from one thing to another. We started with selecting the right parameter for the degree m, but then we said we don't want to set the correct parameters, we want it to be set automatically. And now we have a solution for that, but in this case, we have to select the parameter lambda. And how we can work with that, that will be discussed in another video where we talk about the Bayesian probability theory. So check the videos on the right or in description for the next video. And I thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.